man. I have one of those feelings. This is going to be one of those shows I'm just going to freaking just force myself to do. No nap. Straight work. Too much red wine. Wait. Oh. Hello there, folks. For I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. The reason. The sprite's terrible. You can't see that, but I wonder if you can see. Woohoo! The design on the back. Because, yes! And here in Bumtona Beach, it's Biketoberfest. And I'll tell you what. I'll be honest. With all of the various communicable diseases that you could get from being around bikers, that with the COVID-19 probably being the least, I'm surprised it's so quiet around here. All these bikers, these mean, tough bikers, they're a bunch of wusses. Darn it, I drove by the racetrack and nothing was set up. I was, going, I was so looking forward to getting like a new face mask, nice little skull candy face mask for when like I go to work and stuff. I look bad ass at the gym. No, I think they're having a race. We're like no one, no one but family and friends are invited. They don't need any workers. And wow, this is a big wine glass. That's a lot of wine, folks. I'm not here to talk about my wine problems. I'm here to talk about some WWE SmackDown. It was, I'll tell you, it was a fast show. It went by very quickly. Nothing horrible about it. I'll tell you what, the, probably with SmackDown, if they have less longer matches, that's probably good. So the show starts off with, it's time to play the game. I am the game. This is the game. But you know what Stephanie does all the talking at the beginning? I wonder who wears the pants in those fam in that family. Indeed. But that's okay. Um, eventually Triple H should speak. He congratulated everyone. And he says, for the most part, I want you guys to grab that brass ring. So a brawl ensued. Um Otis was like the funny thing. Otis was like wildly swinging. I have no idea what he was swinging at, but Otis is amazing. Lars shows up and just decides to wreck people, as Lars should rightly do. And this leads to our first match. It's Lars Sullivan versus Jeff Hardy. This was a squash match. I don't even think I got to see most of it. In fact, I missed one match because I was distracted. By doing dishes. But I'll get to that later though. In fact, let's see here. I could probably pull it up now when I talk about this. So you go there. So yeah, Lars versus Jess Sullivan was not much to talk about. For the most part, it was a total squash. I mean, Lars, to begin with, like, freaking runs right over Jeff Hardy. Uh, Jeff did try to get some offense and he did a twist of fate. And then when he went, and then literally Lars Sullivan just popped right back up. And when Jeff was at the top, he's like, oh, F. Yeah, that's not good. Um, cause then he brought him with a choke slam, put hit the freak accident on him. Or did the freak accident on him. Sounds terrible. But yeah, that was it, though. I mean, I was in the shower. I saw the match. I'm like, ah, oh, they're going to break. I got a couple of minutes. Guess what? I did not have a couple of minutes. Because it was over. Like, literally, as I jumped out of the shower. So, yeah. Um, let's see here. I just want to see the ending of that one match. So, yeah, that was a ham sandwich of a match. It is good to see the fact that Lars Sullivan, like, very distinctively won that match. Let's see here. Profits. See, they went, see, they just like went to a commercial. It was weird. Who cares about that? 
This was weird. Wait, today is the 16th, isn't it? Yeah, so it just it just was a t was a total squash. It wasn't even funny. And that's all I kind of need to be. Where the heck's this match at? Though? So was that match? I remember that. I'm trying to look back at the highlights because I forget honestly what happened during the one tag team match. Throwing yells at people here. What the heck is this? Triple H on commentary. SmackDown season premiere. Daniel Bryant speaks. Okay, so let's see. Here. So I'll kind of try and go through this match or the rest of the show as best as I can. I'll try and find stuff like I have absolutely no clue what happened. But, um, yeah, so after that, Lars really just beats up. He just squashed. And then New Day come out. New Day give their kind of promo. That's always good to see. And this is not getting to that one match. So I have no idea what happened with that one match. That's okay. I'll just make up an ending. God knows it would be probably better than whatever WWE had. Um, they start cut a promo. Then in the backstage, you see Cesaro... Sheamus and Shinsuke Nakamura, they cut their own promo. And when they came out, I'm like, oh, please, no. I don't want a new league, League of Nations. It's the last thing you need, the League of Freaks. As you can tell by the the title that I would have put up. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, so, actually, I'll tell you what. The New Day versus Shinsuke Cesaro and Sheamus, that was an amazing go-home match. It was so emotional. Again, uh, you could hear... Biggie's voice cracked a little bit in his promo. He was there was genuine emotion there, which is always good to see. But in the match, um, Shinsuke Nakamura starts off with Xavier Woods. Very good technical match. Uh, Shinsuke, the foot stomps to Xavier Woods again. Very smart, knowing that Xavier had that foot issue. Then Shinsuke and Cesaro they double team Kofi Kingston when he gets his tag in. That was really good though. Um, again, they just, their, the tag team work is so crisp. This is what's good about the WWE. When their tag teams work, they work really well. When they don't work, ah, it's terrible. More so probably in NXT than WWE. In WWE, WWE, in the main roster at least, they do tend to be more professional. On a, again, with the New Day, with their tag team work. They did a leapfrog boom drop. That was great. Xavier Woods lifting Biggie on his shoulders for a big splash. Amazing to see that small guy picking up obviously the much more bigger guy in Big E. That was great. Then uh, Shinsuke um, again Sheamus. He got double team. Big E powerbombing Xavier Woods on Sheamus. And a frog splash by Kofi Kingston. Again, all this tag team continuity, it'll be interesting to see what happens on Raw with the fact that Big E's no longer there for their, their kind of three-person, Freebird-style match, and what happens when it's a true tag team dynamic. That could be either really interesting or really terrible. We'll see how that goes. Then Cesaro and Sheamus. Yeah, because, um, again... Sheamus gets double team. Oh, Cesar and Sheamus, they tease the bar, bar, bar. Yeah, no beach ball mania as long as uh, as long as Cesar is there. Uh, Sheamus, he gets double team. Big E power bombs Kofi onto Sheamus. Again, the frog splash. Shinsuke Nakamura, low bridge Kofi. Shinsuke, Cesaro, and Sheamus, they, they triple team. Very rarely do you see triple teams. See a lot of double teams, but triple teams are kind of rare. Again, the New Day would do it with their unicorn stomp, but everything else of them would be really double teaming. So again, something different. I will always applaud when I see something new or different. Again, it, it piques my interest. It's like, ooh, where could WWE go with this? We shall see. Then, see, I lost my. So then, 
The heels, again, the fast tags in and out. Cla classic tag team work. Can't fault that. Uh, Kofi did hit the SOS, but was too weak to get the pin. Big E, the hot tag. He cleans, cleans house as a big man should. Cesaro, again, so, so, so amazing of Cesaro. Um, however, he eats the double Yurinagi backstabber called Morning Wood. Listen, Xavier, after what happened between you and Paige and the whole internet, you better be careful what you call your double team moves. And that's all I'll say about that. Uh, let's see here. Big E. Uh, Kofi got caught. Kofi got caught and just got pulled down by his hair. That was utterly amazing. Um, the bar assisted white noise was good. Then the a spot fest. Kofi delivers a Jamaican headbutt. Um, Shinsuke eats the up, up, down, down. That was a really good match. The New Day win. Very emotional ending. Good ending. Probably the way it should be. Um, because they're not necessarily leaving, so going out on the tables is not necessary, or going out on your back in this instance is really not the way to go. But this was good, though. Again, this was a really good surf and turf match. Daniel Bryan then comes out in a suit. Um, <laughs> it was funny, he mentions Brie and Birdie sitting there in the Thunderdome. They were taking up a very valuable spot. This guy, Hobo Tom, could have been there. But I guess probably you, the YouTube people, wanted, the, the WooTube people, probably want to see Bree and Birdie Moore anyway. Seth Rollins comes out. Um, again, uh, Daniel Bryan, before that, he teases some matches. Might we see Daniel Bryan versus Kevin Steen? Ooh. Ring of Honor stuff coming back to WWE. And then Seth Rollins comes out. Seth Rollins wrecks everything. Who knows? Seth Rollins, as far as we know, is the one that got Brie pregnant. I shouldn't say that. That's very bad of me. Bad hobo Tom. Uh, I just say that because Seth got Becky pregnant. Meh. Um, I think actually. Where am I? Where am I? Where? Uh, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. Actually, she might be, she might be due right around WrestleMania. Again, I don't know the exact details, but it's a rough guesstimate. Sometime March, maybe April. It depends a little bit. Well, it depends on a lot. But probably in March, I would have take an educated guess. That's when Precky's and Becky Lynch is gonna give birth. And again, congratulations to Becky Lynch. Seth Rollins, just well, we've known that he's ruined wrestlers' careers in the past. So that's that, that's whatever. Um, Daniel Bryan starts to beat Seth up, and then the Mysterios show up. Um, Daniel Bryan's like, hey. I have no beef with you guys. Again, Daniel Bryan versus Rey Mysterio. That would be a dream match. Daniel Bryan versus Dominic Mysterio. That would be one heck of a school lesson for Dominic Mysterio. Good all around, with the exception of Seth. Um, then Murphy shows up, takes out Seth. The crowd cheers, I guess. They pipe in the noise for cheering. Murphy tries to extend the hand of friendship, but Dominic and Father Ray turn that away. And then, oh, wow. Yeah, the end of the show. This was, again, a really quick show. Uh, then they just trade off the belt? That was weird. So the Street Profits, because they're on SmackDown, they have the blue belt. The New Day, because they're on Raw, just they just said, here, we'll just trade you. I don't know, weird. Uh, it was Street Profits versus Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. Um, very classic match. Most part, good, good, good stuff. Nothing horrific. Um, 
I'll tell you what, I, I missed most of the match though. I think I went to like clean up the dishes from like pizza and stuff. And the match was over. Because Rude takes out Ford. That was great. I was assisted famous. It looks like an amazing double team move. And then it was a double team on Ford. That was good. Out of the ring he goes. I'm just going to take a wild guess. The rest of the match was okay. It wasn't anything spectacular when I was watching it. I'm not particularly a fan of the Street Profits' antics. So, you know what? I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. I'll say at least it's a ham sandwich. And again, you can feel free to disagree with me. You can say, why did you leave this amazing match? I don't know. Then we had Sasha Banks and Bailey contract signing and Adam Pierce's earn. Oh, he's... <sighs> contract signings are just so long. I mean, just kiss and make up. That's all, that's all you need to do. Um, no one went through the table. Bailey never signed it. There's still another week left. Eventually, someone's going to go through the table. Happens at all contract signings. Adam Pierce has absolutely no control over this garbage. And Adam Pierce is getting a lot of TV time. Adam Pierce, indeed. Then it's the main event of the evening, and this was actually, I thought, pretty good. Uh, Braun Strowman. So with that, let's see here. Swirl the wine around. Feel fancy. Ah, oh, the aroma. Yes, a sip of wine. That's the hobo sip. Ah. So you have Braun Strowman taking on Roman Reigns. It was actually really good. Uh, Roman Reigns starts off really strong. Roman Reigns is jacked. They did the right thing by taking that jacket or the vest off of Roman Reigns. Now he looks like a pro wrestler. Now he looks believable. Good stuff, finally. Um, again, he Superman punches. Braun Strowman right off the back. Hits the drive-by. That was great. The Simone headbutt. Again, always in my book. I remember Fatu and Samu, the Simone SWAT team. Uh, Afa, the uh, head shrinkers. Always, always, always feared. Uh, going back to Jimmy the Superfly Snuka. Who else? Um, Bobo Brazil, even though he's more Brazilian, I guess, than Samoan. But he was that whole, but again, that Samoan headbutt has always been feared. And good, it's good to see, it's good to see Roman Reigns use that, use that in his arsenal. Um, Roman Reigns is jacked, the Samoan headbutt looks great. Um, good stuff all throughout Roman. Uh, does a drive-by over the, tries, he does, uh, he does the drive-by. Again, Roman Reigns is stuff. I mean, Reigns does get picked up by Braun Strowman, driven over the barricade. Again, Braun Strowman's, remember, the monster among men, men. He's the monster heel. So he's the one that has to look strong a little bit. He has to come back. And that makes sense. And then they say, Goldberg. 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 He was there, too. They just wanted some star power to, to bring in people. They wanted to get a cheap pop. Can't fault him for that, though. Uh, again, too many attempted Superman punches after a while. Uh, Roman Reigns gets choke slam. He kicks out of that again. And that plausible low blow on the kickout. I like that. That's a sneaky low blow. That is a new use of the low blow. I'll even call it a low blow and not a Yano. Only because it's very distinctive. It's different. It's original. Bravo. Bravo, Roman Reigns. That was good. Again, um, he hit a spear, but again, the, the monster among men, the man who's, the man who's used to grappling, hooking, um, scaffolding, 
lifting ambulances is going to kick out of that. That was really good to see. But then after a while again, Braun, so he kicked out of that. Until Roman locked in the guillotine choke, also known as I call it the hobo choke, which is a guillotine choke. Uh, Braun Strowman has to tap out using oxygen. He, Roman Reigns has a full body scissors on. He has a hobo choke applied. Braun Strowman's fading. He's fading. He's fading. He has to tap out. Yes, that's good. I do like the fact that they're adding new moves to Roman Reigns' repertoire again, making it more interesting. Bravo. Bravo, WWE. So um, Braun Strowman taps out. Uh, Roman Reigns brings a chair in the ring. Says, listen, I have to prove to you I'm the tribal chief. Whap, whap, whap. Goes Roman Reigns with the chair to the back of Braun Strowman. Then Jey Uso comes in and and he's like, hey, who's, what's up? It's your turn. Just kind of kicks the chair over to Jey Uso. Makes Jey Uso choose. Do I want to use the chair? Do I not want to use the chair? Do I want if I use it? Do I use it against Roman? Do I use it against Braun? Do I show my my unity, my tribal unity, or do I use it against my future opponent, the Hell in a Cell? This is good stuff. I'll tell you what. Just for that, I'm going to up this match too. But yeah, then Jay Uso says, "No, nah, Us, I ain't using it." Roman Reigns looks disappointed. He's like, "But this is our enemy." Like, you're my blood. That's always good when you get family matters involved in a pro wrestling match and you make it interesting, legitimate, you legitimize it, you give that familial feeling to it. Oh, cousin versus cousin. One one bloodline versus another. But yet sharing the same common end. Oh, oh so good. So Jey Uso takes the chair to Roman. He's like, no, I ain't like that. He puts the chair down. However, Roman gets the chair for a while. Uh, goes after Jay with it. Jay gets out of the ring. Just because of that ending, and only because of that ending, I'll up it to a surf and turf match. And that was SmackDown. And wow, that was a quick SmackDown. And this was a quick show. Oh, shoot. I did forget shoutouts. I have to give some shoutouts. I knew I was forgetting something. Next, I wrote it down so small. Super kick. Again, I don't forget my shoutouts. You, sir, definitely win by six count.
fighter is a sloppy fighter. Joey goes for some cover with a leg hook. Not enough. And wow, I forget who this is. Number ten. Yep, you sir are a match of the air guitar. Probably something I said about why isn't Naomi here, or <laughs> actually probably about Bailey and Sasha just kissing and making up. So again, with that, my week's over. I get to tranquilo. I get to sleep. Oh, sleep's gonna feel so good because I have to go to the liquor store and work tomorrow, and I have to finish up grocery shopping. I need to get some breakfast sausage. But other than that, I have to thank everyone. For watching, if you are here in, in Bum Tona Beach or uh, Daytona Beach for, for, for such a wussy <coughs> Biketoberfest for losers. But yes, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. If you are here in Daytona Beach, please be safe. Do not catch any communicable diseases. That's bad. And remember, coronavirus is probably the least of your worries. Of all, of all the possible diseases you can get here at